place dear to me where I'm longing to be. With my friends at the old country church, where with mother we went and our Sundays were spent. With the friends at the old country church, precious shoes of memory. Oh, what joy will bring to me How I long what's more to be With my friends at the old country church With my friends at the old country church Hey, finally got her all tuned up there. How are you doing, food? Good to see you this morning. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, verse 21 and 21. I know my son Ken, uh, he deals in Proverbs a lot. Let's take that thing right off. Okay, 21 and 21. Have we got it? Let's start the day off talking about pursuing the right things so we'll be rewarded adequately from the only one that can make us prosperous. Before we go any further, prosperity is certainly more than money. It really involves that. It really does. It has all the way through the Bible. There's more, God, the Lord has more to say about money than he does about hell. But he also teaches that it's hard for a rich man to get to heaven. Because many times he ends up loving and pursuing his riches more than looking for God and pursuing God and his righteousness and holiness and his peace and his love. So here in this verse, it says, he who pursues righteousness and love will find life and prosperity and honor. <laughs> I think what this was really saying is, you know, he says, if you pursue righteousness and love, and then he says, you will find life, prosperity, and honor. Obviously, you're getting more back than what you're pursuing. You're getting more back than what you're going after. No doubt in my mind. When it comes to dealing with prosperity and love and honor, Um, those are pretty much things in the tangible world, aren't they? I love my wife. She loves me. I love my sons. They love me. I love my ch church people. They love me. Um, love. Uh, if you take that into the, uh, the realm of agape love, God love, that's even another step higher. Or if you go to the Fleo love that uh, talks about sexual love and and even even deals with the love that you feel in your heart when you embrace a friend. If you you don't want to come around mountaintop ministers if you don't want to get a hug. Or if you do, just tell us right off the bat, you know. Just put your hand up and say, I'm not a hugger. That'll do it. That'll do it. I got a number of people that come here that are not huggers. But most people come here because they're, one of the reasons they come is because uh, they'll come right out and tell you uh, I'm living in a cold world and a cold life and uh, get very little affection and very very few hugs. And uh, I can be sure of one thing when I come to Mountaintop Ministries, I will be hugged. Uh, I will be accepted and loved and hugged. That's special, man. That really is special. And that's not talking about a sexual thing. That's talking about embracing each other 
as brothers and sisters and family and friends. And, uh, you know, like you're special to me. You really are special to me. God's put us together for a reason. We are family. We care for each other. That's love and honor. Uh, you'd, ne you'd never, when I think of this honor thing, integrity goes hand in hand with this, doesn't it? You know, Ken, doesn't, doesn't, I'm talking to Junior here, doesn't integrity, you and I talk about integrity a lot, but doesn't integrity go hand in hand with honor? If you, if you seek for honor and act in an, with a high level of integrity, they go hand in hand. But if if you come up short on integrity and you know and virtue and integrity and 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 lying and stealing or cheating or just just not following through with your word, uh, you know it it it's not an honorable situation. You know it really isn't. So there's a good start for you for the day. It really is and prosperity. God God promised Abraham. Wherever your feet step down in this sand, I'm going to bless it. I'll bless it with children. I'll bless you with giving you land. I'll give you houses. I'll give you, I'll give you gold and silver. I'll give you great wealth. I'll give you cattle. God says this, so I want you to serve me with all your heart. I want you to be a godly man. You know, righteousness. And I want you to continue to keep on having a loving attitude no matter what anybody else does to you. So Abraham pursued righteousness and love just like God told him to do when his nephew Lot, selfish nut that he was, um, you know, was up there with his uncle and they decided to separate their business interests and go the separate ways. You know, Lot should have, by rights, honored his uncle, who was much older. Instead, he took the very best, what he thought was the very best, left his uncle with nothing but rocks and weeds. <laughs> but he lost, he lost out in the long run. He lost his family in the long run. He lost his wife. She turned back. She turned back, and uh, he turned into a pillar of salt. Little kid in Sunday school said, that's nothing. My, <laughs> my mother my mother looked back and she turned into somebody else's telephone pole. <laughs> it's like the lady that called her husband and said, honey, the car won't start. He said, why? She says, there's water in the carburetor. <laughs> He says, well, where's the car? She said, in the swimming pool. <laughs> that happens when you're looking back. <laughs> here's, the, here's the deal. Um, God said, don't look back. If we, if we keep looking ahead, there's always a brighter day ahead, a day of honor, a day of righteousness. Uh, you know, there really is. God told um, Abraham, he said, Take your one and only child that I gave you and give it back to me. See what happens. Went up to Mount Moriah, and there Abraham lays his son on the elder. And uh, Isaac said, well, you got the wood here, and you got the fire here, but where's the lamb? God will provide, son. God will provide. Now, how, how, how he ever got his son that was strong and vital in his youth to lay down on that altar because God told his dad to do it is more than I know. No, I would not do that. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd be saying the heck with you and your sacrifices. <laughs> you, you can find somebody else to lay on this altar. But here's the deal. Abraham such a, had such a high level of integrity and honor and purpose and such a high level of love and pursued righteousness at such a high level. You don't see Isaac doubting him at all. 
He just did it, and sure enough, bah! right over there in the corner, in the bush, was a ram for the sacrifice. But God wanted to really find out if Abraham was willing to give it all up. And when you're willing to give it all up for God, guess what? you give it all back, just like he did. Okay? So read that again. You know, it's about pursuing righteousness and love. The love of God, what makes him happy. And if a person does that, they find life, prosperity, and honor. Isn't that a great verse? That's for mostly, that, that's, I'm sending that out to all the business people I know today. All the business people that I know today. God bless you. God bless you and prosper you and make his way to shine upon you in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen and amen. If there's any of you out there that I've never met and uh, you're in business and you would like to say, that was for me, that was good, uh, you know, feel free to comment. I just love to meet you. Love to meet you. And uh, so uh, jump on there, okay? We'll see you later. And have a great day. With Pastor Ken Reed in Charlotte, rise and shine.